Hello beautiful homemakers. We are continuing with pamphlet three. Winning without money. The biggest thought in your mind perhaps is that others are constantly thinking of and deprecating your poverty. Not at all. If they are thinking about you at all, they are probably wondering why you are so backward or how weakly a creature you must be not to assert yourself more, or why you don't forget your self-consciousness and do as everyone else does. They are thinking not of the absence of your money, but of the absence of your pride and self-assurance. It doesn't occur to them that money has anything to do with your diffidence. If you yourself didn't think of your poverty, and thus let it affect your manner and your appearance of assurance, the fact that you are not as fortunate as they would seldom cross their minds. Even if it should, they admire and are attracted to the character that can be proud and self-respecting without the support of money. Many very wealthy people indeed regard such an accomplishment as remarkable and admire you even more than if you had the support of fortune. If, therefore, you will put aside your poverty as a thing not worth thinking about, others will do the same or more. They will admire you for an indifference and a superiority to material wealth which they themselves cannot imitate. People who are accustomed to money know that it is no indication of superiority. To have inherited it is merely good luck. To have made it is in many cases good luck also, or superior unscrupulousness, better health, greater opportunity, or greater selfishness. I think I would add to that greater desire and loving their own business, lots of hard work, long hours, attitude, and persistence. None of the qualities which usually lead to the acquisition of wealth amount to much either socially or morally. In comparing yourself with others, do not consider merely the possession of wealth, but the way in which it is used. That is the only way to measure your relative values. If you meet someone who uses money in a noble, honorable, generous, or artistic way, then give that someone the honor due to a superior personage. If you meet others who do not use their money in such a manner, who use it only to promote selfishness, or vanity, or snobbery, or meanness generally, then give them in your own heart the contempt they deserve. Surely you are better than these are. Surely you ought not to feel inferior in the presence of such as these, no matter how much money they have, no matter how rich their apparel, no matter how supercilious the airs they put on. If you will observe rich people closely, you will learn that nine out of ten of them are very inferior to yourself. They prove it in the very way in which they use their money. Don't, under these circumstances, let yourself think or let them think that they are any better than you are. Who has the money is of no consequence. Who could use it best? That is the main question. If you know that you would use the money if you had it in a kinder, nobler, and holier fashion, then you know that you are the superior being, and you may rest assured that the rich snob knows it too, a little as she likes to admit it. People watch and see how you can tell who is self-confident and who is uncomfortable. Your clothes and you. Sometimes it is not merely the absence of wealth that causes self-consciousness, but the absence of apparel such as our wealthy associates wear. In certain circles, in churches, in schools, and in colleges, there seems to be quite a tendency to form cliques in which clothes are often a factor governing admission. In reality, however, what excludes many a girl is not the inferiority of her apparel, 
but the air of being so acutely and painfully aware of her lack, so diffident and self-conscious that, regardless of her apparel, she is not good company. And when we are wearing clothing that we feel looks bad on us, or that is the wrong colors for us, we act differently and kind of go into ourselves. And we're just not as personable because we're so focused on ourself and our clothing. She is so uncomfortable because of her imagined disadvantages that she casts a damper on the spirits of her companions. She is not excluded because of her clothing, but because she seems queer, odd, or unpleasant. Usually it's just all in your own mind. When the girls have their good times, they want a lively, interesting crowd. They don't want anyone who thinks only of herself and her absence of expensive apparel. Think of Anne of Green Gables. She was never dressed like the other girls, until Matthew got her her dress with puffed sleeves. And yet she was still the life of the party, the life of the classroom. If you have been troubled along this line, forget your clothes. Talk to these people as if your clothes were as good as theirs. If the people seem a little stiff at first, attribute it not to your apparel or to their poor opinion of it, but attribute it rather to your former actions your diffidence and lack of companionableness, which have made you, in their opinion, very poor company. Try to offset this bad impression by making them think that you like them, that you would be jolly company, and that a good time would be the better for your participation. Though she may not be welcomed everywhere, a self-respecting, companionable, likable girl will find enough friendships to ensure her social happiness, whether she has wealth or not, whether her home be humble or pretentious, and whether her apparel be modest or elaborate. She is too rare an event not to be eagerly entertained. And recently I went to an event where I was not going to know a single person, but I went with the attitude that I would meet new people. I went with the attitude that why wouldn't they want to get to know me? So I was able to get my food and find an open table ask if I could sit down, and I enjoyed getting to know three new women. Another thing that I learned from Micah Meyer's book was that when you walk into a place where you don't know anyone, you look for an open circle. So if people are standing in a circle and they're all facing each other, that's a closed circle. They're talking about something and they don't want to be interrupted. But if some people are facing outward or the, the circle isn't shoulder to shoulder, it's broken, you can approach the person who has kind of moved their shoulders out of the circle. That person is looking to invite someone in. Micah also said the way you introduce yourself is you just choose someone who looks friendly and you say, I don't know anybody here, so I thought I would introduce myself. And that is a really good beginning. And then you ask, how they happen to know the host, or how they happened to find out about the event, or whatever. One time, I went to a new VBS, Vacation Bible School, with my son, and I dropped him off at his classroom, and they were having a class for women. So I went into the main auditorium where it was going to be. I sat down, and there was about six other women there. No one said a word. No word of welcome. So I sat there for a few minutes feeling very awkward when finally I leaned forward and said to the woman in front of me, I'm new here, I don't know anyone, and told them my name, etc. And she said, oh, I'm new too, this is my first time. And then every single woman in that room leaned over and said, this is my first time here too. Just think if I hadn't broken the ice. We all probably would have left thinking this was the rudest church ever. But we were all new, we were all being shy. I broke the ice. And then within 10 or 15 minutes, the women of the church that were in the back preparing for the day finally came in and greeted everyone. Learn to step out of your comfort zone. The best way, however, to acquire a self-respect superior to such insignificant things as wealth and apparel is to fix your mind on the bigger things of life 
and to become so absorbed in them that you have no time or thought for the paltry things. What is rich? asks Emerson. Are you rich enough to help anybody? To succor the unfashionable and the eccentric? Rich enough to make the Canadian in his wagon, the itinerant with his consul's paper which commends him, to the charitable, the swarthy Italian with his few broken words of English, the lame pauper hunted by overseers from town to town, even the poor insane or besotted wreck of man or woman, feel the noble exception of your presence in your house from the general bleakness and stoniness to make such feel that they were greeted with a voice which made them both remember and hope. Without the rich heart, wealth is an ugly beggar. End of Emerson. Pride yourself accordingly on your character, not on your money or your raiment. Be so rich in heart that the emptiness of your purse may be forgotten by others as well as by yourself. Thousands of people have lived and died without wealth, but have been honored and respected by their communities, honored and respected by themselves. Look everyone in the eye, stoop to none. Hold yourself equal to any, and make yourself equal to any in the sterling qualities of character that are of genuine importance. Now, of course, that's all very well to say and to do, and there's a lot of truth in it. And yet, we do want to take a look at our dress and try and dress better. Now, if I remember correctly, in another pamphlet, they're gonna go into detail as to the studies that they did about what men like to see on women. But for right now, I'm just going to touch on a few things regarding clothing, and we'll go deeper into this later. So the past year, I really focused on reading beauty books, watching YouTube videos regarding beauty, fashion. I joined three groups, three programs about beauty, fashion, and makeup. There were certain basics that was extremely handy to know and use, such as knowing your right color, knowing which styles look best on you. For instance, I look best in v-necks. I can't wear boat necks. You need to learn how to play up your own best features and minimize what you are self-conscious about. You need to know what size purse looks good on your body size, how big your necklaces and earrings should be, etc. But I want to remind you that fashion trends are simply there to make the company money. They are not there to make you look good. So you, and only you, are responsible for learning what is best on you. You need to ignore the trends. We have got some extremely ugly trends coming up. And some of these trends are also when they tell you to wear leather or pleather. That is so rarely a good look, and most women need to resist it, because we are not rock stars. Even Madonna herself has learned better. So don't let Madonna be a better dresser than you are. I want you to imagine going on a blind date, and when you get to the restaurant, you see that the guy is wearing a leopard print shirt. What would your initial impression be of him? Now, I've never seen a man wearing animal prints, and hopefully I never will, because it's not a good look. You'd probably look at that man and think, who does he think he is? Tarzan? George of the Jungle? Now, what if you showed up on the date wearing zebra or leopard print? What is his first impression of you going to be? I think the average American man would think, one, who does she think she is? Jane, his wife? Or two, great, she's wild, feisty, and loose. So if wild, feisty, and loose isn't the look you're going for, then don't wear animal prints. If you desire to be held in high regard, don't wear animal prints, no matter how on trend they are. But if you say, 
I love animal prints, and I'm going to wear it. It's who I am. Fine. You don't want to hide who you are. Just don't expect people to compliment you. They might say, that's quite an outfit. That's not a compliment. If you absolutely must have leopard print, etc., then buy a handbag or a scarf that you tie around your handbag or a leopard print belt or maybe even leopard print shoes. But leave the clothes for costume play to surprise your darling husband with in the privacy of your own home. Don't go out in it. No matter what the fashionistas say, the rest of the world sees animal prints differently. Leather and pleather is the same thing. You won't look chic. You won't look on trend. If you're young, you'll look wild, feisty, and loose because your clothes say it for you. And if you're not young, it'll probably just make you look whiter. Your clothes say it for you, and animal prints say that you are on the prowl, and a prowling woman looks desperate. And if you're older or overweight, the leather is going to make you look fatter if it's thick or has a sheen. Leather, no matter what the fashionistas tell you, never looks good on a woman. Men looking for wives are going to look at a woman in an animal print and leather and say, she won't fit into my family because leather screams high school grease. Now, maybe if you ride horses or motorcycles, you can wear it for those instances. But otherwise, it shouldn't make an appearance. Now, let's say that you get leather pants because you've been told that they're on trend for autumn. Well, you can't wear them the other three seasons. And next autumn, they're going to be out of fashion. So don't bother. Leather is not a classic piece. And it will just end up taking a lot of space in your closet. It won't look good on you and it will send the opposite message of what you want to send. I remember that when I met my husband, we'd been dating for about a month, when I was going to meet his brother and his brother's new wife for lunch and a movie. And I was thrilled about meeting them so early in the relationship because it was going to be a huge peak into his life. I had already resolved that if I didn't like his brother or his brother's wife, I wasn't going to continue dating him because I didn't want to marry into a crazy family. I didn't want to marry into drama. I didn't want to marry into a dysfunctional family. So I was overjoyed when I met them and found out that they were delightful and just the kind of family I knew I could envision fitting into. Well, they were doing the same with me, right? They were looking forward to meeting me to see what kind of woman he had picked up and would she fit in to their family. So what if I had shown up in a zebra striped shirt and leather pants or a leather jacket? My clothes wouldn't have said fashionista. They would have said wild, feisty, loose. She's not one of us. She won't fit into our family dynamics because your clothes say it for you. So if you show up at church or at a concert in the park or at the library or at work or at the grocery store, at a museum, at a birthday party, at a fundraiser or at a community meeting, your clothes speak volumes about who you are and what you are saying about yourself. Now, don't be in despair. Most of us, probably more than half, need help in finding what looks good on us. And it is usually just trial and error. I had to learn by error that since my shoulder slopes from scoliosis, I cannot wear boat necks. They end up making me look lopsided and necklines matter. When I was in my 20s, I could wear turtlenecks. I can't now. They just make me look fat. Hopefully you learn these things when you're young, but you start at any time and you begin with color. There are several courses on YouTube that you could take for $100 to $500 to help you find your fashion style. Just remember that most fashion courses teach fashion that men do not like. And since women don't know what really looks good on them and they don't know what men like, 
they go with what the fashion houses, the people trying to make money, and the people in the fashion industry with these courses tell them they're most likely fashionistas. That's not the majority of us. I'd say the majority of women dress classic modern. They want to look nice, elegant, classy. Then there are some women that have an artistic flair. They're more fashionista. And then the rest of women dress down. They want to be comfortable so badly that sometimes they dress badly as well. So a few general guidelines are, especially for younger women, never show your belly button. It doesn't look good. It's not sexy. And also, no crop tops, even if you're in your teens. You need to be careful with your floral print. It can't be too big. It can't be too small. It can't be too loud. And definitely, no play suits, because you're not a child. If you want to be looked upon as a woman, you need to dress like a woman. And no what they call bandage dresses because they're simply too tight. Showing every curve of your body is never necessary. When you're in your 20s, you naturally have that tendency to want to dress that way because that's how our culture dresses. But you will look classy if you skip the bandage dress and not show everything. Mystery is so much better. And don't follow trends such as neon. No one looks good in neon. Now, if you are playing a sport and you want neon in that, fine. But not for your everyday look outside athletics. No cartoons or Disney characters on your shirt. No cycling or yoga pants or leggings, no matter how on trend they are. No ripped jeans or bleached jeans. No tank tops especially racer-backed tank tops, unless you are exercising. A linen fitted tank top will elevate your look. And be really careful of bra straps showing. Just the other day, I had lunch with a woman who was wearing one of the new fashions, which is a shirt with lace sleeves, and the lace goes all the way up to your neck. But I could see her bra strap. She needed to wear either a strapless bra or at the very least buy on the internet clear plastic bra straps that she could attach to her favorite bra. So be careful with t-shirts and jeans. It might be fine for home, but you want to elevate your dress when you're out in public, especially if you are trying to catch a man's eye. Men like women in feminine dress. It's so much better instead of wearing a t-shirt or a tank top to wear a real short-sleeved top or blouse that fits nicely. You'll just elevate your look. Another thing with blue jeans, you might find them to be very comfortable, but remember also that they're very common. Everyone wears blue jeans, so you're not going to stand out. You're not going to look nice. You're going to look average. You're going to look common. In your shorts or your jeans, choose instead black or white or even navy. High-waisted usually will keep in a tummy. You just need to wear the correct top. When you wear white, anything white, before you buy it, you put your hand through it and make sure that you can't see your hand. Right now, the trends that are coming in are see-through clothing. If you have a see-through top, you wear a camisole underneath. Lace is supposed to be pretty big this next season. Lace is beautiful. It's feminine. You just need to make sure that underneath you are not showing anything. Remember that the purse you carry is your tell. It's your calling card. Is it frayed? Dirty? Pen marked? Is it a really odd color? Your purse is actually the difference between looking cheap or affluent. And when you dress, make sure that you your clothes aren't wrinkled and have creases. You can't be lazy. If you want to elevate your look and be attractive to people, you need to buy a steamer. You can unwrinkle your clothes, filling the steamer with distilled water, having it heat up, and having your clothes unwrinkled in under three 
minutes. You can learn to tailor your own clothes or you can take them to a tailor. Ask around. There are many quality tailors who can help you elevate your clothes for just a few dollars per garment. A new trend coming in is your earrings that are long, like touching the shoulder, but that's probably not a good look on you. Chandelier earrings will probably be a good look because that might elongate your look, but just because the trends go to shoulder grazing earrings, doesn't mean that you should. Be careful with hoops because everybody wears hoops. You grab your hoops and, well, that's what people always see you in. So unless they're incredibly gorgeous hoops, now if you love them and that's you and you like to dress down, okay, that's fine. But if you have drawers full of jewelry, choose something else. Be creative with your jewelry. Jewelry is a wonderful conversation piece no matter where you are in the grocery store at the dentist's office at church at a concert in the park anywhere you go jewelry can be a conversation starter and hoops are not going to do that and never show too much cleavage it makes you look desperate it cheapens your entire appearance because people want to look into your eyes not your cleavage now at night, as long as your skirt is knee length or longer, your shirt can dip a bit more. But if you're wearing a shorter skirt, then your top needs to cover more. If you find that your shirt does dip too low, especially when you are bending over, and we bend over just to pick up our purses, then wear a cami underneath. There are beautiful camisoles out there. Or you can even sew lace onto one of your own camis or onto one of your tank tops that you're no longer going to be wearing. Or find a pretty shell to wear under. Many women show too much. And I just want you to know that it's inelegant and it makes you look desperate for attention. And good men, they actually appreciate modesty. And then you'll have no mishaps or reasons to look back in embarrassment. Now, men do like women in heels. However, stilettos are rarely necessary. You'd have to be very short. They're really too high and they're over the top. So for evening wear, your heels, you don't want them to go over four inches, which I think is 11 centimeters. And in daytime, you wanna keep your heels at either two inches or three inches. I think I already talked about having no words or logos on your clothing because you don't want people staring at your chest trying to read what's on your shirt. And logos are inelegant. Your clothing should never have vi visible logos. And probably no logos on your belt either. Very few people can pull that off. The only really acceptable visible logos will be on your purse but not all over your purse, because you're not an ad. You are not a walking billboard. And then it's okay to have a visible logo on your glasses. But subtlety is the key. Elegant women are subtle. You know their clothes are nice by looking at the clothes, not because you're looking at a label. The last thing is go through your clothes and ask, does this look cheap? Is this too common? Does it flatter my body shape? And is it masculine or feminine? You can also go to my website and I have a chart about all these things and it's called Be Chased from Coarse to Classy. One more thing. Don't be afraid of color as long as it's a color that looks good on you. Brighter colors can really elevate your look and draw people towards you, or even just a pop of color. If you must dress in a neutral color, try a pop of color with your purse or with your jewelry. You can also subscribe to the Hallmark channel just for one month and watch a few movies not for the movie, but to see how they dress the women on these shows. These women are in color, and they're wearing their colors. Notice how many times they change the clothing, 
how many coats they have, and look at the difference of the different colors on them. I know I am trying new brighter colors, and it does make a positive difference. I also worked with one woman who felt like everyone overlooked her. We elevated her look, and she is just amazed at the difference in how people treat her. Remember that people will treat you according to how you dress. And if you want to be treated better, try elevating your style. 